All right, so let's have a look at some uh, mixing and production. Uh, I thought we'd look at uh, the vocals in the song Warzone uh, from my solo album, The Architect. Um, yeah, let me know if there's anything else you want to look at and I'll, I'll do it. So um, yeah, we're looking at the vocals here and uh, let's listen to the vocals on their own. We're in a war zone, no escaping Blood is spilling, bones are breaking I will conquer anyone who will stand in my way Cause I'm a fucking god! Cool, so um, that's one main vocal and uh, a double and then there's two harmonies at the end here so let's check the main vocal on its own War zone, no escaping Blood is spilling, bones are Add breaking Anyone who Double on its own. Who will stand in my way. So each kind of vocal, whether it's the main one or the double or the harmony, they all get treated a bit differently, but um, I'll show you what I've done to the vocal. So if I show you the raw vocal on its own. We're in a war zone, no escaping. Blood is spilling, bones are breaking. I will conquer anyone who will stand in my way. Cause I'm a fucking god. Cool, so obviously a lot quieter. Um, so this uh, plugin adds like a bit of console saturation, just gives it a bit of flavor, it doesn't really do much. We're in a war zone, now he's... It's not really much point speaking about that because you probably won't even notice difference. Now this is where things get interesting um, because this is a multi-band compressor and you can see the different frequency ranges from the low end here up to the high end here and all the different bands in between. And um, when we pass the audio through it, it's gonna um, pull down things that are too loud. So let's check out what that does. We're in a war zone, no escaping. Blood is spilling, bones are breaking. I will come. So it's kind of cool. So this kind of low band is gonna pull down the, the sort of plosives when it gets to, you know, when he does like P's and B's and like things with a lot of explosive power. Um, the uh, pop shield in front of the mic should get rid of a lot of that, but um, for the stuff it doesn't get rid of, um, it just kind of is a good way to filter out a lot of those low ends uh, in a sort of natural, organic way um, while retaining some of it. Um, moving up, this sort of range here, um, sort of 300 to 1000 is gonna be like the sort of body of the vocal. Um, it can be kind of like the muddiness if you're not careful. And uh, then this frequency range here from sort of like 1,000 to 5,000 is gonna be sort of a bit of the presence and kind of harshness. So when it, some singers can get a bit harsh, Ricky can definitely get a bit harsh because he's got so much power in his voice and he's, you know, like a trained opera singer. And in certain ranges, like the key resonances, it can get kind of harsh, like any opera singer or any, um, uh, sort of trained um, singers, they have certain resonances which can get a bit harsh, so um, that's gonna pull down, them down when they get too loud. And um, 4,000 to sort of 10,000 is gonna be that sort of range where, uh, yeah, just some kind of high end in the, vo in the voice, a bit of like sibilance, um, you know, like S's. They can be exaggerated sometimes, especially when we use a lot of compression, so that's gonna naturally bring that down a bit. And um, same with this band, but also a bit of air. So what we'd expect, since most of the vocal range is gonna be centered around this area, these bands sh shouldn't get touched too much, apart from when there's an S um, or a T, you know, that sibilance. So um, it's kind of acts like a natural EQ when these kind of, are brought down a lot and this band is not brought down so much. It's almost like an EQ has just boosted the high end. So let's have a look what that's doing. War zone, no escaping. Blood is spilling, bones are breaking. I will conquer anyone who will stand in my way. Cause I'm a fucking god. So we can see it's kind of like non-linear processing. It's it's just bringing things down when they kind of need to be brought down. So it's, it's kind of cool. Um, next of all, we have uh, a compressor, which is basically working as a side chain EQ. And this is just bringing down this frequency that's a bit harsh and Ricky. So this sort of um, 
range you hear it in a lot of the evals so we can I don't know if we have any here but this is kind of what it's doing you can see the uh, reduction here in the, that harsh range around uh, sort of two and a half kilohertz so if I turn it off you might notice some harshness it really just eases off um, sort of the harshness in those frequencies. There's another plugin called uh, Soothe, which is really great for that. And I'd probably try using that these days, but before Soothe, I used this. And I even had a special rookie <laughs> preset. But um, yeah, this is how we used to do it in the olden days, and uh, it's still really effective. So I love using that on Ricky. And uh, <laughs> I don't know if I've ever used this since. I remember I used this on this album. It's a, a plugin by Joey Sturgis called Gain Reduction. And it is, you know, a compressor. Um, I think it's a limited to, probably adds a bit of saturation and a bit of um, great for sort of heavy vocals. So this is gonna bring the level up a lot. And uh, it's gonna add like a little bit of cool saturation and compression and just sort of level out the vocals. When I record vocals, I record with a bit of compression on and um, I kind of like that. It gives it um, like a fat sound straight out the gate. But, uh, you know, this obviously adds a little bit more. So let's check it out. War zone, no escaping. Blood is spilling. Bones are breaking. I will conquer anyone who will stand in my way. Because I'm a fucking god. Yeah, I messed around a lot with the settings. And that really, I think, gave it a kind of edge. I liked using that. That was cool. I might use that again. And another one I use a lot these uh, these days is the um, soft tube uh, FET compressor, which is really cool. Uh, so next of all, I have just this Waves um, Renaissance folks, which is just a compressor, compressing a bit more. The war zone, no escaping, blood is spilling, bones are breaking. I will conquer anyone who will stand in my way, cause I'm a fucking god. In this kind of music, when everything's really loud, you want to make sure your vocals are, are super kind of processed. They need to have, they need to sound sound like you're, you're doing your job, you know? You don't want it to sound too natural or it's just not going to compete in, in a massive wall of sound. It has to be really kind of compressed and like, just like, you know, a high-end production sound. Um, so this is um, EQ I'm using and I'm adding some high-end at 5K. And uh, the first thing I do when I use this is I turn the analog off because that just adds unwanted noise. Uh, so yeah, 4 dB boost the um, 5K. The cool thing about this EQ is um, the more that you boost it, the, the band uh, kind of changes shape. So if you uh, boost higher, it's gonna be a different uh, shape of cue than if you have it here. So it ends up sounding like really natural. You can really boost it like as high as you want. Um, but I just boosted 5K for now. And then I did some more high end around 8K. Um, and this uh, 5K is on a shelf. So everything above that is gonna be boosted. And I obviously thought it needed a bit more high end. So I boosted that. It's really, it can be hard, I think, to get enough high end out of your source audio to compete with a lot of professional mixes. Um, a lot of what you're competing at is gonna have like insane high end and sometimes insane low end. And uh, yeah, I obviously just thought it needed a bit more just to um, just to compete with, with everything else. And that's cool. Um, so I added a bit of 500 Hertz. Uh, as I said earlier, when we we're talking about these bands, that sort of 500 Hertz range is the body. Um, so yeah, I don't know if it's that I was, it was getting too harshly affected here, but it, it was, it needed some more 500K, some body, um, perhaps to compete with like the thickness of the guitars and the keyboards and, and the bass and everything. Uh, I don't know, I just think it, um, also when you when you boost the low end, uh, well, sort of that mid range, low mid range of the vocals and the, the high end, it kind of gets rid of a bit more of that harshness in a way. It's kind of like your, um, if you've got an EQ here and like this, say this is a frequency range that we don't like, 
um, we've got some plugins like trying to like cut little bits out, but if you boost the high end and then the low end, that's almost like you've done a cut here <laughs> in a weird way. It's almost like the reverse of just doing that if you look at the curves. So in a sense, I like to think of it as another way to get rid of those frequencies I don't like. Um, so boosting is like really cool and it's something I did a lot on this album. Um, I love that sort of boosting sound. It's a very sort of Chris Lord algae, um, pop punk sort of approach to mixing. And uh, when we've got all this high end boosted and this compression, it's gonna bring up a lot more of the, uh, the sibilants, the S's and the T's. So I used a um, de here. And you'll notice this will get set off whenever there's an S or a T. So let's check it out. We're in a war zone, no escaping. Blood is spilling, bones are breaking. I will conquer anyone who will stand in my way. Cause I'm a fucking god. So sometimes it gets set off by bees and stuff as well. And that's cool. Um, you have to make sure you don't overdo that. And then the final plugin is just uh, take off the low end, I believe. Yeah, so it's just getting rid of everything below sort of uh, 150 or so. And that just gets rid of a lot of rumble. And uh, it's being sent to like a reverb. Uh, Ricky loves it when you have reverb and he makes you use lots of reverb. So that's what that's about. But I, I tend to not like too much uh, delay and, and uh, reverb and things. Oh, I guess I, I've not used a delay on this. That's kind of unusual. So let, let's have a look at the, uh, the uh, books for, oh, I do have a delay, cool. But the, uh, yeah, I'm just using Valhalla by the looks of things. Cool. A uh, cool thing I like to do, I don't know if I've done it in this song, I probably did, is I, I like to... Um, time my reverbs to the uh, the key of the, to the tempo of the song. So um, I think this song's about 180. And if you look up, uh, if you Google like delay time calculator, you can put in your tempo. And I, I think for 180, it'll probably come up somewhere around here for like the length of a bar. So that's kind of a cool thing to do. Uh, make sure, probably makes a very subtle difference, but it makes sure you're, kind of reverb doesn't go on too long and to bleed into other sort of uh, bars of music and, and stuff like that. Um, cool, so let's have a look at the double track. A lot of it's gonna have the same sort of processing, you know, familiar stuff here. Um, might have a bit stronger getting rid of harshness stuff. <laughs> um, I used uh, a different compressor here by the looks of things. So, similar to what we used before, and then anyone who will stand bit of compression, and then this doubler is a cool thing. I like to use the uh, basic doubler setting, and then I get rid of the direct, and that just gives it a wide sound. So it it's kind of like you've recorded a left and a right, even though you've just recorded one center, and it uh, pans it out, and it's kind of good for the uh, vocalist. You don't wanna you don't wanna overburden him on the day you're recording because you've only got so many takes in him and you want them all to be good so you can hear that more in the left and the right speaker and then this distortion thing is cool it just kind of um it smooths out the vocals gets rid of a lot of sort of high end and just gives it some drive and a real mid-range boost so let's check that out in a war zone, no escaping. Blood is spilling, bones are breaking. I will conquer anyone who. It's subtle, but it gives it an edge. I love it. And then some more DSing. Um, see if it needs that. Spilling, bones are breaking. I will conquer anyone who will stand in my way. Cause I'm a fucking god. Uh, usually on the doubles, I go a bit harsher on the DSing because. Um, you really don't want those S's to come through audibly. I, I like to think of this double track as like, um, like a shadow, like you might do a drop shadow in uh, Photoshop or whatever. It's kind of like, you don't, 
you want it to be there to thicken up the main vocal, but you don't really want it to have any identity of its own. Uh, and then there's just like a delay, just to create a bit of um, uh, a bit of an effect. So um, I just remembered what my philosophy was when I do this. I didn't have any delay on the main track because I wanted it to be um, upfront and crisp, but I'm putting all my cool effects and stuff on the double. So the double is um, gonna almost be like my effects track as well. So let's have a listen to that with a delay. So no escaping, blood is spilling, bones are breaking, I will conquer anyone who will stand in my way, cause I'm a fucking god! Cool. And then finally, this is just going to be getting rid of some, uh, you get a lot of low mid buildup when you have doubles and stuff, so this just gets rid of them. I kind of used a really funny cube of looks of things, 72 decibels an octave. Yeah, I just really didn't like um, that sort of range, I guess. And um, I went a bit higher with the with the high pass, with the low cut on this, uh, up to about 250. And uh, I also got rid of that, some, so, some sort of um, high end in there. Uh, it's like I said, I don't want this to have too much in, uh, identity of its own. So I got rid of that sort of conflicting frequencies. Um, and sometimes you might have to get rid of different frequencies. Like uh, it depends on the singer and like just how it sounds in the mix. So that's pretty much it for the Vox Double. And uh, uh, we can take a quick look at the Vox Harmony. Just have to unfreeze this. So I've got them panned left and right. I like to pan them hard left and right. Um, it's just a personal preference thing. Learned from kind of Chris Lord Algae and how he mixes. So again, it's a lot of the same kind of stuff. Um, it's the only difference really is I've cut out the mids in a different way. And I think actually it's got a mono delay, but it's a different time I've used a uh, quarter note uh, uh, like this uh, with the D instead of the, instead of the um, what was I used in the double the uh, yeah um, eighth I yeah it's good to you don't want them to be you want to create a little bit of variation there if you can so the um, the dotted notes are cool if you've got like a, a melody that's like very you know, on the beat, dun, 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 then the dotted note is going to help it come through between the beats, which you either want or don't want, depending on what you're going for. But um, yeah, I think I think it's kind of cool. And uh, I guess if you've got, um, sometimes you have melodies that are very like dotted melodies, dun, 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 dun. so you might want to use just a straight eighth note so it comes through between them and uh, create some more ambience that way. Um, and that's kind of how that is. I've got different kind of vocals for like the verse and the, and the chorus and some might have like slightly different settings. Uh, like here I've got this um, verse vocals, but to be honest, I think it's probably just a way to control the, uh, the volumes easier without having to automate too much. So the settings are probably kind of similar and then I've got ho harmony chorus, same thing. I might want the harmonies at different levels in the chorus and then you're doing the verse of the intro and hence all the different settings and stuff. Uh, let's have a look at the Vox bus. Let's see what's going on in like the final chorus or something. So no escaping, blood is spilling, bones are breaking, we will conquer it. Done quite a lot, but it looks of things. Um, so I, another one of these mix bus uh, console saturation things, very subtle, probably don't need it. Uh, now this is just brick walling off anything under 150. Um, I guess maybe by the time I come to do the buses in the mix, things are kind of, uh, you know, all, I got all the instruments going on together and like some things are like annoying me. Like, uh, for example, I'm guessing in this one, there was just too much low end build up and I was like, where can I make some cuts? So I just brick walled off everything. We should be able to see what's going on. Anyone who will stand uh, there you see the, there's a little bit of low-end information that's being cut off there. Um, so that's just kind of uh, 
not making probably much difference. By the time I'm, I'm finishing a mix, like everything I do is making like 0.1% difference, but all those different 0.1% will add up to quite a big deal. Um, and this is this one, obviously, another um, uh, multi-band compressor, and I'm just kind of using it as a dynamic EQ and getting rid of some of that, more of that harshness, because there's a lot of it that comes through when um, you got a vocalist singing in this uh, frequency range, you're gonna have a lot of harshness. So let's have a look how much that's taking off. And in our way. So if you think that you can. So this is affecting all the vocals, like all the main vocals, the harmonies, the doubles, and um, it's very subtle. I'm just, um, it was obviously just like annoying me a little bit. And it, it's sometimes easier to do things on the bus than to go into every individual track. And uh, some people might argue that uh, you don't want to be doing adding too many plugins and doing too many processing and it, that it's easier to do it with one but sometimes it sounds cool when you've when it's like super messed up vocal when you've done loads of stuff to it like um, if you if you have a vocal that comes through and you just don't do any eff effects to it or any processing that's kind of not very fun so um, rule number one have fun and then again I've just more harshness getting rid of subtle again can break us be prepared to meet your makers by the power of my you could argue there's still some harshness left in it um whatever <laughs> uh that's just uh his sound he's uh he has a lot of uh presence and this um this is really cool this is basically just uh leveling out all the vocals so i've got loads of different vocal tracks and um I don't want it to get super loud when I've got loads of them. I want them to be at a kind of uniform level. So this just kind of crushes them a bit. And it's kind of like automating the vocals down when there's loads of layers. And it saves me having to do as much of that. Um, have I done that at all? Uh, yeah, I have done it in places like uh, occasionally where it's needed it. Uh, in quieter sections and things, but then this generally, let's see how much is taken off. Of my hand, you shall bow one command. Two or three decibels, it's kind of subtle. And that's basically it. This one is just, um, I think I've got some stuff going on with, um, so my vocals are going, um, I've got all my instruments going to a bus and uh, I've got them getting kind of compressed at that bus and then they go into a master bus, but the vocals aren't kind of processed on the same bus um, as the rest of the instruments. So I've had to bring it up to a level and that's just kind of what I'm doing. And this is making sure it doesn't go over zero dB. Cool, so that's it. That's basically how I mixed vocals for this song. And uh, Wow, <laughs> did more than I thought, cool. Um, yeah, it's so fun mixing vocals. I'll probably do it differently next time, but that was kind of fun, it was an adventure and it worked for the album, so cool. Cheers for watching.